mean, and also one for a proportion. But first, a little bit of review. Now, when we want to construct a confidence interval, remember that a confidence interval has two parts. So one part is the point estimate. And the second part is the margin of error. Point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Now, if I'm constructing a confidence interval for a sample mean, then my point estimate is indeed the sample mean. And my margin of error is determined by either the z-score or the t-score times the standard error. Now, since the z-score requires we know the population standard deviation, and we're working with a relatively large sample size, we're better off using the t-distribution. And in the t-distribution, I don't know the population standard deviation. I also do not know I can't work with a large sample size, small samples. So the test statistic will be a t-score. The Standard error will be the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. If I'm working with a proportion, then I collect some data, say that bag of M&Ms, and I get my point estimate, which would be a proportion, which I will call P hat, taken from that sample. And then my margin of error will be a z-score. And the standard error will be the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. Now this p hat is the same as this p hat. That's the proportion of interest. So if I'm collecting M&Ms and say I've got 20 in the bag and 5 are blue, and I'm interested in blue, and I want a confidence interval for the proportion of blue M&Ms, then P hat would be 5 out of 20. P hat would be 5 out of 20. Q hat would be the conjugate, 15 out of 20. And the sample size would be 20. And the z-score determined by my confidence level. OK, so let's take an example. So let's suppose. I take a random sample of 10 children. So 10 children, n, will equal 10. 10 children. And their average growth for the first year was 9.8 inches. x bar, 9.8 inches. And their standard deviation is 0.9 six inches. I'd like to calculate the 95% confidence interval. So what I'm going to do is go to the T table. I'm going to go to the T table and I want to find the T score for a 95% confidence interval now my sample size is 10, so my degrees of freedom will be 9. So I'm going to look up the table, 95% confidence interval. I have 9 degrees of freedom, and my t-score is 2.262. So my t-score plus or minus 2.262. 2. So now, I'm able to construct my confidence interval. So my confidence interval, come over here to my formula. The P 
point estimate is the sample mean, which is 9.8 inches. My T-score, 2.262 inches. My sample standard deviation, 0 0.96, and the square root of the sample size is then the square root of 10. So this is what I want to calculate. Alrighty, so let's do that. Let's do that calculation. So I'm going to have 9.8 plus or minus. And that would be plus or minus 2.262 times 0.96 divided by the square root 10. And that gives me plus or minus 0 0.68669. It keeps going, let's call it 687. So then for my confidence interval, 9.8 minus 0.687 would give me a low end of 9.113 and then taking 9.8 and adding 0.687 would give me a high value of 10.487 and this would be my confidence interval for the average growth in the first year. Let's remember what a confidence interval means. This is a 95% confidence interval. And that means if I constructed several confidence intervals in this manner, 95% of them would include the true population mean for average growth in the first year. Whether this particular interval includes it or not, I have no way of knowing. It either does or it doesn't. There's no probability about it. It's either here or it isn't. And I don't know, and I never will. That's what confidence intervals are. All I can say is that if I construct many intervals in this process, 95% of them will include that true population mean. Alrighty. That's how we can construct confidence intervals for the mean. Now, in the event we were working with a large sample size, and we knew the population standard deviation, and we have the normality requirements, we could work with the z-scores. But since we don't, we will stick with t. And thanks again to William Gossett and to his work for Guinness, in Dublin, Ireland, in developing this T distribution. If and when you go to Dublin, you certainly want to go to the Guinness storehouse and you can see where Gossett did this work. He left from England and from England to Ireland and to Dublin and to Guinness and hence the T distribution which we have today thanks to William Gossett. All right. Now let's take a look at the confidence interval for a proportion. The entrance to Guinness Storehouse, as you see, has quite a collection of people waiting to get in. The admission is 20 pounds just to walk in the place. So we'll view it from the outside. Now, the significance of William Gossett's work 
when he was here at the beginning of the 20th century, working here in Dublin, working for Guinness. His work involved testing different beer formulations as Guinness was working to make the perfect product. And Gossett was limited to working with small sample sizes. And here to date, there was no mechanism for doing so. And so Gossett did what mathematicians and statisticians have always done when they need something that they don't have. And that is they invented or created. And so it was that William Gossett invented a distribution for normally distributed data when one does not know the population standard deviation and one is restricted to small sample sizes. He developed this distribution, but Guinness did not allow its employees to publish their research. And so he published it anonymously as the student distribution. And over time it became known as the student T-distribution. So here it is, and here we are in Dublin, at the Guinness Storehouse, where it all happened. And now today the T-distribution is perhaps the most important distribution used in elementary introductory statistics courses. For a proportion. And we said it's the point estimate, which would be the sample proportion, plus or minus the z-score, times the standard error, which is the square root of the sample proportion p times its complement, p hat times q hat, divided by sample size. Here's an example. So let's say we take a survey and we ask adults if you would like to travel into outer space. And we're going to sample 763 people. And of those 763 people, 329, 329 say yes, they'd like to go. Well, that means that 434 say no. Now we're interested in those going. So P hat is the proportion of those who want to go and so p hat is 329 out of the total 763. And q hat is 434 out of 763. So now to set up this confidence interval, I'm going to take my point estimate, 329, out of 763, that's my point estimate, plus or minus my z-score. Now let's suppose we would like to do a 92% confidence interval. Now let me remind you that for a 92% confidence interval, remember now I'm going to be putting 92% in the middle of the table leaving 8% for the two tails. So this tail would be 0.04, 4%, and here 0.04. So when I look in my normal curve table, and I'm looking for an area of 0.04 to the left, and for 0.04 to the left, I come up with 0401, and that's a z-score plus or minus 1.75. So negative 1.75, positive 1.75 are my z-scores, and then I will convert and get the x-scores here, which will be the cutoffs for this confidence interval. And to get those then, I'm going to come over here and continue this construction. My z-score, plus or minus 1.75, times the square root, 329 divided by 763, 
times 434 divided by 763, and we're all divided by 763. So now it's a matter to put those numbers into our calculator and crunch those numbers. So when I do, I come up with 329 out of 763 plus or minus 1.75 times 0 0.0179, which gives me a plus or minus of 0 0.0313. And we could keep going depending on how many places you want to carry this and giving me a confidence interval of 0 0.3998 2.4625. And there's my 92% confidence interval for the proportion. I hope you find these examples helpful as you continue to study confidence intervals. Understanding that confidence inter intervals is an area in inferential statistics. And in the traditional introductory statistics course, confidence intervals is usually the first topic that we encounter as we begin our study of inferential statistics, studying data, collecting data, and analyzing data, and now making inferences about the population from that data. It's a great subject, great field. I hope you find this helpful.